And seeing the multitudes, Jesus went up to the mountain, and his disciples came unto him, and all those who hungered for his words. And seeing them gathered, he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Peace I bring to thee, my children, the sevenfold peace of the earthly mother and the heavenly father. Peace I bring to the body, guided by the angel of power. Peace I bring to thy heart, guided by the angel of love. Peace I bring to thy mind, guided by the angel of wisdom. Through the angels of power, love, and wisdom, thou shalt travel the seven paths of the infinite garden, and thy body, thy heart, and thy mind shall join in oneness in the sacred flight to the heavenly sea of peace. Yea, I tell you truly, the paths are seven through the infinite garden, and each must be traversed by the body, the heart, and the mind as one lest thou stumble and fall into the abyss of emptiness. For as the bird cannot fly with one wing, so doth the bird of wisdom need two wings of power and love to soar above the abyss to the holy tree of life. For the body alone is an abandoned house seen from afar. What was thought beautiful is but ruin and desolation when drawing near. The body alone is as a chariot fashioned from gold, whose maker set it on a pedestal. Loath to soil it with use, but as a golden idol it is ugly and without grace. For only in movement doth it reveal its purpose, like the hollow blackness of a window when the wind puts out its candle. Is the body alone with no heart and no mind to fill it with light, and the heart alone is a sun with no earth to shine upon, a light in the void, a ball of warmth drowned in a sea of blackness. For when a man doth love, that love turneth only to its own destruction. When there is no hand to stretch forth in good works, and no mind to weave the flames of desire into a tapestry of psalms, like a whirlwind in a desert is the heart alone, when no body and no mind to lead it singing through the cypress and the pine. And the mind alone is a holy scroll, which was worn thin with the years, and must be buried. The truth and beauty of its words have not changed, but the eyes can no longer read the faded letters, and it falleth to pieces in the hands. So is the mind without the heart to give it words, and without the body to do its deeds. So what availeth wisdom without a heart to feel, and a tongue to give it voice? Barren is the womb of an aged woman, is the mind alone, with no heart and no body to fill it with life. For lo, I tell thee truly, the body and the heart and the mind are as a chariot and a horse and a driver. The chariot is the body, forged in strength to do the will of the heavenly father and the earthly mother. The heart is the fiery steed, glorious and courageous, who carries a chariot bravely, whether the road be smooth or whether stones and fallen trees lie in its path. And the driver is the mind, holding the reins of wisdom, seen from above what lieth on the far horizon, charting the course of hoofs and wheels. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as a small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Blessed is a child of light, who is strong in body, for he shall have oneness with the earth. Thou shalt celebrate a daily feast with all the gifts of the angel of earth. The golden wheat and corn, the purple grapes of autumn, the ripe fruits of the trees, the amber honey of the bees. Blessed is the child of light, who is wise in mind, for he shall create heaven. The mind of the wise is a well-plowed field, which giveth forth abundance and plenty. For it is thou showest a handful of seed to a wise man, he will see in his mind's eye a field of golden wheat. And if thou showest a handful of seed to a fool, he will see only that which is before him, and call them worthless pebbles. And as the field of a wise man giveth forth grain in abundance, and the field of the fool is harvest only of stones, so it is with our thoughts. As the sheaf of golden wheat lieth hidden within a teeny kernel, so is the kingdom of heaven hidden within our thoughts. If they be filled with the power, love, and wisdom of the angels of the heavenly Father, so they shall carry us to the heavenly sea. But if they be stained with corruption, hatred, and ignorance, they shall chain our feet to pillars of pain and suffering. No man can serve two masters, neither can evil thoughts abide in a mind filled with the light of the law. 
He who hath found peace with the mind hath learned to soar above the realm of the angels. Know this peace with thy mind. Desire this peace with thy heart. Fulfill this peace with thy body. Blessed is the child of light who is pure in heart, for he shall see God. For as the heavenly Father hath given thee his Holy Spirit, and thy earthly mother hath given thee her holy body, so shall ye give love to all thy brothers. And thy two brothers are all those who do the will of thy heavenly Father and thy earthly mother. Let thy love be as the sun which shines on all the creatures of the earth, and does not favor one blade of grass for another. And this love shall flow as a fountain from brother to brother, and as it is spent, so shall it be replenished. For love is eternal. Love is stronger than the currents of deep waters. Love is stronger than death. And if man hath not love, he doth build a wall between him and all the creatures of the earth, and therein doth he dwell in loneliness and pain. Or he may become as an angry whirlpool which sucks into its depth all that floats too near. For the heart is a sea with mighty waves, and love and wisdom must temper it, as the warm sun breaks through the clouds and quiets the restless sea. He who hath found peace with his brothers hath entered the kingdom of love, and shall see God face to face. Know this peace with thy mind. Desire this peace with thy heart. Fulfill this peace with thy body. Blessed is the child of light who doth build on earth the kingdom of heaven, for he shall dwell in both worlds. Thou shalt follow the law of the brotherhood, which saith that none shall have wealth, and none shall be poor and all shall work together in the garden of the brotherhood, yet each shall follow his own path, and each shall commune with his own heart. For in the infinite garden there are many and diverse flowers. Who shall say that one is best because its color is purple, or that one is favored because its stalk is long and slender? Though the brothers be of different complexion, yet do they all toil in the vineyard of the earthly mother." and they all do lift their voices together in praise of the Heavenly Father, and together they break in the holy bread, and in silence share the holy meal of thanksgiving. There shall be no peace among people, till there shall be one garden of the brotherhood over the earth. For how can there be peace when each man pursueth his own gain, and doth sell his soul into slavery? Thou child of light, do ye gather with thy brothers, and then go ye forth to teach the ways of the law to those who would hear. He who hath found peace with the brotherhood of man, he hath made himself the co-worker of God. Know this peace with thy mind. Desire this peace with thy heart, and fulfill this peace with thy body. Blessed is the child of light who doth study the book of the law, for he shall be as a candle in the dark of the night, and an island of truth in a sea of falsehood. For know ye that the written word which cometh from God is the reflection of the heavenly sea, even as the bright stars reflect the face of the heavens. As the words of the ancient ones are etched with the hand of God on the holy scrolls, so is the law engraved on the hearts of the faithful who do study them. For it was said of old that in the beginning there were giants in the earth, and mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And the children of light shall guard and preserve their written word, lest we become again as beasts, and know not the kingdom of the angels. Know ye too that only through the written word shalt thou find the law which is unwritten, as the spring which floweth from the ground hath a hidden source in the secret depth beneath the earth. The written law is the instrument by which the unwritten law is understood, as the mute branch of a tree becomes a singing flute in the hands of the shepherd. Many there are who would stay in the tranquil valley of ignorance, where children play and butterflies dance in the sun for their short hour of life. But none can tarry there long, and a head raise the somber mountains of learning. Many there are who fear to cross, and many there are who have fallen bruised and bleeding from their steep and rugged slope. But faith is the guide over the gasping chasm, and perseverance the foothold in the jagged rocks. Beyond the icy peaks of struggle lies the peace and beauty of the infinite garden of knowledge, where the meaning of the law is made known to the children of light. 
Here in the center of its forest stands a tree of life, mystery of mysteries, he who hath found peace with the teaching of the ancients, through the light of the mind, through the light of nature, and through the study of the holy word, hath entered the cloud-filled hall of the ancients, where dwelleth the holy brotherhood, of whom no man may speak. Know this peace with thy mind, desire this peace with thy heart, fulfill this peace with thy body. Blessed is the child of light who knoweth his earthly mother, for she is the giver of life. Know that thy mother is in thee, and thou art in her. She bore thee, and she giveth thee life. She it was who gaveth thee thy body, and to her shalt thou one day give it back again. Know that the blood which runs in thee is born of the blood of the earthly mother. Her blood falls from the clouds, leaps up from the womb of the earth, babbles in the brooks of the mountain, flows wide in the rivers of the plains, sleeps in the lakes, rages mightily in the tempestuous sea. Know that the air which thou dost breathe is born of the breath of the earthly mother. Her breath is azure in the heights of the heavens, sows in the top of a mountain, whispers in the leaves of the forest, billows over the cornfields, slumbers in the deep valley, burns hot in the desert. Know that the hardness of thy bones is born of the bones of the earthly mother, of the rocks and of the stones. Know that the tenderness of thy flesh is born of the flesh of the earthly mother, she whose flesh waxeth yellow and red in the fruits of the trees, in the light of the eyes, the hearing of the ears. These are born of the colors and the sounds of thy earthly mother, which doth enclose thee about. As the waves of the sea enclose a fish, as the eddying air a bird, I tell thee in truth, man is the son of the earthly mother, and from her did the son of man receive his whole body, even as the body of the newborn babe is born of the womb of his mother. I tell thee truly, thou art one with the earthly mother, she is in thee, and thou art in her. Of her wert thou born, in her dost thou live, and to her shalt thou return again. Keep therefore her laws, for none can live long, neither be happy but he who honors his earthly mother, and keepeth her laws. For thy breath is her breath, thy blood her blood, thy bone her bone, thy flesh her flesh, thy eyes and their ears are her eyes and ears. He who hath found peace with his earthly mother shall never know death. Know this peace with thy mind, desire this peace with thy heart. Fulfill this peace with thy body. Blessed is the child of light who doth seek his heavenly Father, for he shall have eternal life. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Know ye that the Lord hath been our dwelling place in all generations, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever he had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting hath there been love between the heavenly Father and his children. And how shall this love be severed? From the beginning until the ending of time doth the holy flame of love encircle the heads of the heavenly Father and the children of light. How then shall this love be extinguished? For not as a candle doth it burn, nor yet as a fire raging in the forest, lo, it burneth with the flame of eternal light. And that flame cannot be consumed, yet that love thy heavenly Father, do ye then his bidding. Walk ye with his holy angels, and find thy peace with his holy law. For his law is the entire law. Yea, it is the law of laws. Through his law he hath made the earth and the heavens to be one. The mountains and the sea are his footstools. With his hands he has made us and fashioned us, and he gave us understanding that we may learn his law. He is covered with light as with a garment. He stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain. He maketh the clouds his chariot. He walketh upon the wings of the wind. He sendeth the springs into the valley, and his breath is in the mighty trees. In his hand are the deep places of the earth, the strength of the hills is also. The sea is his, and his hands form the dry land. All the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his law. And to his children doth he bequeath his kingdom, 
to those who walk with the angels and find their peace with his holy law.